Hey everyone, this is Ben Botkin. Today, I want to briefly discuss some approaches for using muted brass and unmuted brass together in the same piece. Specifically, I want to talk about layering with brass. I'm looking at uh, Orchestral Tools Berlin Brass, Muted Brass, which has a number of different types of mutes, like uh, here we have the Harmon stem half mutes. When you think muted brass, you might think jazz, big band. Certain mutes absolutely do have these stylistic connotations. But muted brass, given that it has a very bright and nasal quality, can also have functions in orchestral slash media music contexts. What I want to show you today is a short orchestral adventure film game piece where I'm muting, I'm using muted and unmuted brass in combination, both in layered contexts and occasionally swapping off with each other. I'm using primarily the straight mutes articulations because these sound the most orchestral uh, to me. So let's go ahead and listen to this short piece and then discuss some of the techniques I'm using in the brass. The primary way I'm using muted brass in this piece is layering it with regular brass uh, to help the brass cut through and add a little more sparkle. And I want to do that because this arrangement is so full, the more mellow and rounder regular brass tones actually sometimes get a little lost or feel a little bit muddy in this piece, especially in the French horn range. So kind of around the, the octave sort of above and below middle C. Now, if we focus in on the brass, you can see, um, here's what we have. We have Berlin brass, regular, regular brass here. We have Berlin brass, muted brass here. And we don't need that Harmon mute. Let's get it. Let's just get it out of the way. There you go. Stay down there. And if you take a look, the red places are spots where the brass are layered with the mutes. The pink spots are places where only the regular brass plays, and then the yellow spots are places where only the muted brass plays. And that is because I want a specific timbre from one or the other. So here's the French horn line uh, without the mutes. Now, it sounds pretty good, but the problem I'm running into is when I have all the rest of the orchestra around it, the roundness and the mellowness of these notes sometimes gets a little buried. And I have to really crank the volume, but then the balance is a little weird. So uh, let's listen to the Let's uh, mute our mutes. Mute our mutes. Back up a little bit. Pretty good. But I thought, what if I just added a little, if I layer a little bit of the mutes in with that, I can get a little bit more, uh, a little bit more bite and clarity. So here it is with the mutes. So if you look at the mutes, I don't actually have them on every single note. Uh, in in this line, I only have them on the notes I wanted to act uh, wanted to accent. So, that's to help it cut through. And then there's a moment, there's a moment where like the main melody sort of chorus jumps out. And then there's like a little echo down the French horns. And that was absolutely getting lost without the mutes. So here's that part without the mutes. Now let's listen to it with the French horn mutes. The other mutes are still muted. Let's 
listen to those in combination. You can, you can, you can hear those guys just adding a little brightness in there because otherwise that, that middle range gets a little bit lost. Now let's take a look at the trumpets. I have a little bit of muted trumpet with no regular trumpet behind it. I wanted only that more nasal quality here in the very beginning. And that's just to kind of cut through with the rest of the orchestra. Um, then it gets rounder and fuller as the regular brass come in and carry this section. And I have only the regular brass here. But when we get to the chorus, it's not cutting through as much as I would like. So this is where I'm bringing in my mutes. Let's listen again. Dun, da, 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 da. That's something I actually did in this case. Um, let's see if I open up, let's go back to velocity. Okay, if you see here, on the regular trumpet, I actually dipped the velocity in the spots where I'm going to layer with the muted brass, I dipped the velocity down really low. And the reason for this is I actually wanted that softer uh, trumpet sound to kind of create the body of the blend. And then I wanted to use the muted brass to bring out uh, the higher end, the brighter end. If I was gonna use just trumpet, I would have these at a much higher velocity, like, But in this case, that's actually the sound I want to blend with my muted brass. And when you hear it all together, the muted trumpets and the muted uh, stopped horn just add a little clarity and it just makes the brass pop when otherwise it might just get a little bit lost or blurred in the midst of everything else I have going. Now I also have down here, I have um, one trombone with straight mutes and it's doubling uh, an interior uh, trombone part that I have. And I have it, I'll show you the volume on these automation, I, I draw this in a little bit. There's some parts where I want to emphasize uh, the muted timbre a little more, and so I'll ramp the volume of that one up, and I'll ramp the other one's volume or velocity down. So here, let's listen to just the trombones with their mutes. Without. With. And it just, again, it's just it's just popping through the mix just a little bit to add that. And you can see this is at a pretty low volume uh, relative to my bones. You know, at the lowest, they're going down about, you know, minus 6 dB. These guys are, are camping out around minus 10 dB a lot of the time. So it's they're at, at a much lower volume, but just adding a little bit of, 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 cut, of cut through that mix. If we mute the regular brass, we kind of lose the body of the piece. So here we go. And then if we mute the muted brass, we lose some of that clarity. combination, we get a really nice mixture of body and high-end clarity. Check here on the trumpets. Right here, I want the trumpets to start uh, going out. And what I have, I have the mutes disappearing in volume way sooner than the regulars. And that's so that 
are uh, the timbre of the brass kind of morphs back to this more mellow one as the trumpets phase out. So let's listen to this. So by the end, we're getting only, basically only those non-muted trumpets. That's basically where and how I'm using the mutes to layer and to blend. The one other thing that I'm using them for uh, is just to add a little bit of effect on their own. So here towards the end, I've got some nice little uh, repetitions patches. Uh, trumpet and trombone. And that's one of the things I love about muted brass. It's definitely brass, but it's the the color is so different. You can use it in ways it's a little harder harder to use brass. You can almost use it more like percussion. Um, so layering aside, it's also great for accents. Maybe you just need a little call out. Maybe you combine it with uh, something like xylophone or a mallet, and it just just to add a little accent here or there. It's great for both of those uses. And that's basically all I had to share today. So in summary, you can use muted brass for jazz, for big band, that kind of stuff, but you can also use it in a more modern cinematic slash game context to accent or to layer with regular brass to create a sound that has both the body and fullness of regular brass, but the bite and clarity that muted brass provides. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and you have a great day.